This video will outline the proper operating steps for a Genesis mid-size scrubber. It is separated into three sections for ease of training. Machine preparation, machine operation, and daily maintenance. Prior to starting the machine, be sure to read the owner's manual thoroughly, focusing on operational instructions, safety precautions, and maintenance steps. Additionally, use proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, whenever required. Let's get started with Section 1, Machine Preparation. The first step is to fill the Genesis Scrubber's 25-gallon solution tank. Fill ports are in both the front and the rear of the machine. While filling, you can check the solution level by utilizing the solution sight gauge on the rear left side of the machine. The marks on the tank indicate how full the solution tank is with cleaning solution. If using SolidChem technology, insert your chosen chemical solid into the SolidChem cartridge as shown here. From there, the machine needs to be filled with water only. Place the hose in either fill port and refer to the sight gauge at the back of the machine to see the tank's water level. If not using SolidChem technology and utilizing a wall mount dispenser, select the correct cleaning product and highest flow rate and insert the fill hose into one of the fill ports. Alternatively, if mixing in the solution tank, measure the chemical according to the chemical's recommended dilution for a 25-gallon tank. For ease, pour the chemical in the front fill port first, and then fill the rest of the tank with water using a hose in one of the fill ports. Lastly, if not using SolidChem, make sure to turn the SolidChem switch to the off position. This will shut off the SolidChem refill indicator light on the upper console. Then, install the squeegee assembly on the rear of the machine. To do this, align the knobs on the squeegee assembly to the slots on the squeegee bracket as shown here. Then, hand tighten the knobs until they can't be turned. Finish the installation by attaching the recovery hose to the squeegee assembly. Genesis mid-sized disc scrubbers are equipped with automatic on-off disc pad driver or brush attachment. If you have an orbital scrub deck like this, you will be aligning a rectangular pad to the pad driver on the deck. To get the best water distribution and efficiency, we suggest aligning the pad about a half inch forward of the drive plate, like this. Once aligned on both front corners, press the front corners on the Velcro, then proceed to press the middle and finally the rear corners, so you have even connection across the pad. Now that the machine is prepped and ready, let's move to Section 2 and learn how to operate the Genesis for daily cleaning and project work applications. This first portion of the machine operation section will be split into two parts based on the control type of your machine. The first part will focus on the standard controls, as shown here. Here is an overview of the standard controls configuration. On the upper console, you have the Scrub Deck Position knob, which has four positions, the Up or Transport position, and Low, Medium, and High Down Pressure positions, Battery Gauge and Hour Meter, and Speed Control knob. On the lower console, you have the Power On-Off Key Switch, Solution Flow Adjustment knob, and motor circuit breakers. And the last two key operational elements are the squeegee up-down lever, which also activates the vacuum in the down position, and the bail activation trigger. The bail activation trigger engages the forward reverse propelling system, and if the scrub deck is in one of the down positions, it also engages the solution flow and scrub deck. Now that you understand either the standard or touch encoder controls, we can now move to setting the machine up for your application. When setting up your Genesis Scrubber to perform your application, your goal is to always deliver fantastic results as efficiently and at the lowest cost as possible. In this portion of the video, we will be showing the standard controls. Typically, the logic is pretty simple. With relatively clean floors, the machine can be set to a lower solution flow rate and down pressure, while your speed can be moderate to high, depending on safety and comfort level. With dirtier floors or tougher project work, however, the machine should be set to a higher solution flow rate and down pressure, while your speed should be moderate. The only exception at using these higher settings is if you are performing finish removal with an orbital scrubber and maroon surface prep pad. In this application, you want to utilize low solution flow and very low speed. Once you've made your setting selections, first lower the squeegee and activate the vacuum, then squeeze the bail activation trigger. This will activate the machine in the settings you selected for your application, and the machine will propel forward. To stop the machine, let go of the bail activation trigger, which will also deactivate the scrub deck and solution flow. 
Move the scrub deck position knob to the up position. Before raising the squeegee, activate the bail trigger to move you forward and recover the solution that is still on the floor. Once recovered, you can raise the squeegee. The vacuum fan will continue to run for a few seconds to evacuate the recovery hose. Should you need to reverse the machine during scrubbing, first lift the squeegee to the up position like shown here. Then push the bail trigger forward and the machine will move backward. Be careful when backing the machine when in tight spaces. Once you've reversed to the desired position and are ready to move forward, lower the squeegee into the operating position and squeeze the bail trigger to begin scrubbing again. Be sure to move over the area and recover the water left from when in reverse. If using solid chem technology for your cleaning chemical, there will come a time when the solid chemical is dissolved and needs to be replaced. At that time, the solid chem refill indicator on the dash will light up to notify the operator. To replace the solid chemical, lift the recovery tank to open up to the battery compartment and locate the solid chem at the front left of the machine. Then, remove the top cap and lift the cartridge out, as shown here. Please note that in most cases, there will be some of the chemical solid remaining in the cartridge. Simply slide the new solid into the cartridge so that it is resting on top of the old solid. Or you may remove the smaller piece, insert a new solid into the cartridge, and then place the smaller piece on top. Either way, you will get 100% use and zero waste from your chemical operation. As was demonstrated in the machine preparation section of this video, place a new chemical solid in the cartridge and slide it back into the solid chem container. Finish by putting the top cap back into place like shown here. This last section outlines the suggested daily maintenance procedures. Whether you are partially done with a job and your solution tank is empty, or you have finished your job, the Genesis recovery tank needs to be emptied and maintained. The first step to emptying the machine is to position the rear of the machine near the approved drain, as shown here. Once in position, remove the cap of the recovery tank drain hose, being careful to do it above the waterline so you don't get splashed. Then kink the hose and lower it into position over the drain. Slowly release the hose so the dirty water can flow down the drain. While the tank is draining is a good time to empty the recovery tank debris tray. Remove the debris tray from the machine and empty its contents into a trash can. While you have the debris tray out of the machine, check your Fortify Tank defoamer puck. If the puck is dissolved, replace the puck by rotating the puck cage counterclockwise until it is no longer connected to the debris tray. Put a new defoamer puck in the cage, then reconnect it by aligning it to the debris tray and rotating it clockwise into the retainer clips. Finish by reinstalling the debris tray, as shown here. By this time, your tank is likely finished draining, and you can hose down and clean out the recovery tank. Leaving the drain hose open and in the drain, open the recovery tank lid and fully rinse the tank of any contaminants. This is also a good time to remove the vacuum fan ball filter and rinse it off as well. When fully rinsed and remaining water is drained, pick up the recovery tank drain hose, reinstall the end cap, and place the hose back on the retainer clip. Note that best practice is to leave the recovery tank lid in the open position while in storage so it can dry quickly, reducing the potential for mold and bacteria growth. The next step in your end of shift maintenance is to clean and rinse your pads or brushes. This will extend the life and reduce the risk of debris scratching your floors. Manually remove the pad from the pad driver plate as shown and rinse. In each case, best practice is to have a location where the pads or brushes can drain and dry prior to the next shift. It is now time to maintain your squeegee system. Remove the squeegee by loosening the two knobs on either side of the recovery hose. Then slide the squeegee assembly off the machine and detach the recovery hose. Rinse the assembly to remove any dirt or debris. Finish by wiping down the front and rear squeegees to dry and removing any remaining debris. The final step to cleaning the squeegee is to inspect the drip trap. Loosen the wing nuts and detach the drip trap. Remove any debris by rinsing with the hose. Once complete, reinstall the drip trap onto the squeegee assembly. Then inspect the squeegee's edge. If it is showing significant wear, or if you had noticed depleted recovery performance during operation, it is time to flip or replace the blades. To remove the blade, unlatch the retainer band and remove the opposite end of the band from the retainer hook. The squeegee can now be removed and flipped or replaced. Each blade has four edges that can be used prior to replacement. Reattach the squeegee by aligning the holes to the squeegee assembly as shown, 
Then reattach the retainer band by hooking the open end to the squeegee assembly and latching the other end to secure it. If your job or shift isn't finished, reinstall the squeegee assembly as shown in section 1. If your job or shift is complete, attach the squeegee to the transport squeegee hanger to dry until the next operation. Note that this hanger can be used to transport the machine from location to location with ease, particularly in and out of doorways, elevators, and other narrow areas. Finally, it is time to check if the batteries need to be charged. Refer to the battery meter on the dash. If the batteries need charging, unwrap the electrical cord and plug it into a standard outlet. The status indicator light on the charger shows which stage of charging the batteries are in. The level shown gives the operator an indication as to how long fully charging will take. The green indicator light means that your batteries are fully charged. In the rare case that your onboard charger is inoperable, an offboard 24 volt charger can be used in the interim by detaching the Anderson connector located near the onboard charger and connecting the offboard charger into the Anderson connector going into the machine. Use the offboard charger's indicator lights to tell you whether the machine is charged. Thank you for purchasing Genesis and watching this operational instruction video. If additional information is required, refer to the Genesis Midsize Scrubbers Manual or visit Betco.com for more information.